We're here with Professor Jonathan Nagler. Um, professor Nagler is a full-time professor at NYU, that's right, New York University, and he works on elections, particularly voting behavior, turnout, and elections and social networks too. Yes. The first thing I'd like to ask you, because here in Argentina we don't know much about the electoral process in the US, is why don't you have primaries the same day as you have the general elections, which are in November, a Tuesday in November? Ah, because we have both a federal system and we have a party system where each state has its own party, and so the states decide when to have a, when they're going to hold their own primaries. And the national parties may or may not want to have all the elections on one day. If they did, it would make everything very expensive because you couldn't possibly compete um, if you didn't have enough money to compete nationally. The way it is now, you can spend a, you don't need as much money to start because you can campaign in one state. Um, but the only, th there's no real answer to that question other than that we don't have a, a central authority deciding when the parties nominate candidates. The parties are not actually creatures of the state. The parties are just the parties. They're private organizations and they choose to operate this way. There is, the, the United States government has no mechanism to force parties to say, you have to do everything on the same day. There's, there's no mechanism to do that. So if you look at when we nominate candidates for other offices, the, the, the legislature happens all throughout the year. Different parties run their primaries different days. And there just is no federal entity that controls that. Um, you've just mentioned money. How important is money for the electoral process in the US? <laughs> Um, extremely important. Um, you basically can't win an election in the U.S. without lots of money. Um, it used to be that if you wanted to run for, for Congress, if you didn't have a half million dollars, you should not bother to try. And now it's, it's, now it's a bigger number. You might not want to think about it if you don't have a million. Uh, it, it, the, the, the campaigns are essentially very expensive. Most campaigns depend on either TV time or lots of paid media. Um, and without the ability to, to be heard, candidates simply have no chance in these elections. Do you think Sanders has any chance? I think he has a chance in the primary. I, I don't know how big it is. Um, and to be honest, we in the U.S. are traditionally not very good at predicting these primaries. So, I, I, so that's why I'll say, yes, he has a chance. If you look at the poll data, it's not, too, it, it's not zero. I'm not betting on him tonight. But he certainly has a chance. Um, what would the Trump nomination do to the Republican Party? <laughs> the Trump nomination would really hurt the Republican brand. Well, the Republican, and again, it's, it's hard to talk about the Republican Party in the U.S. because we have 50 state Republican parties, but to the extent that there is one, a Trump nomination is really bad for them in the long run because the, Trump, the Republican Party brand is really being damaged among a, an increasing set of, a, a set of voters that is doing nothing but increasing in size. So he is working <clears throat> as hard as he can to alienate Hispanic voters. And this, this is the, the disaster of the, of the Republican Party. He's not the first Republican to alienate Hispanic voters, obviously. Um, but he's doing it in an incredibly visible way. And if he's successful at it, if he actually gets the nomination, I think that that's going to be a really painful thing for the Republican Party brand as Hispanics become an ever larger share of the electorate. Uh, we talked informally about what it, mean, it would mean to have uh, another Clinton presidency. Do you think it would be good for American democracy to have another Clinton president? I think it would be a horrible thing for American democracy to have another Clinton. Um, that would give us two Clintons and two Bushes with one other um, president in between. And in a country of almost 300 million people, to think that we get our leaders from two families is really quite sad. Um, and this basically brings us back to pre-revolution, which was over 200 years ago when we, you know, had a king over in England. Um, so it would be quite sad if we are stuck with, yet again, someone from one of these two families.